discussion was, wow, I, I remember visitations by angels in my Christian walk. I remember visitations by the Lord in my Christian walk. I remember radical moves of the Spirit and visions and dreams and prophecies and healings. That was just all the last week. That my experience in the Lord has always been super duper natural. And that I've had a lot of supernatural spiritual experiences. And and yet to most believers, this is not commonplace. This is not commonplace. When you reach the end of that segment, you just, just give me a hand up. Thanks. It's not commonplace. That, that most believers can truly love the Lord, can truly love Jesus, can truly love the Holy Spirit, can truly love God, and all the angels and all the all the saints and the patriarchs and the Bible and the hymns and the, and the church and everything and be truly sincere, but they're not really having spiritual experiences. And I would never, ever, 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 ever think that in my entire life I would ever, 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 ever admonish believers to seek spiritual experiences. I would never think to do that. That is like saying to children, play with a loaded gun. You know what I'm saying? But it's like saying, to, actually, to be very clear to me, it's like saying, it's 4th of July. Here's a bag of fireworks I bought at the market. Have fun. You know that I would never be the one to suggest such, such falling. I played with the fireworks this year, and I hate doing that. I mean, they're really cool, but I sit there the whole time going, are we the ones that it's going to happen to? Our, you know what I mean? Are we, are, are we the ones you're going to hear about on the news as the 4th of July fatality? And that's what I think about Christians who seek spiritual experience. Because Chris, if I, if, yeah, I'm i literally saying, I want, to, I want you to expect to hear the voice of God in your life. I want you to expect to heal people of cancer. I want you to expect to raise people from the dead. I want you to expect to see angels and hear voice, the voice of God thundering from heaven. I want you to expect to speak in tongues. I want you to do all that. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I haven't said it yet. But that's what I'm going to say. And I don't want to be the guy who says that because the guy who says that says to people, go out and just set yourself up to be susceptible to as much spiritual garbage that's out there. Because... I say, expect to do all those things. And I heard me make the list. And someone is going to hear, okay, so I'm going to hear the voice of angels. I didn't say hear the voice of angels. It was a dissertation. <coughs> yeah, they're probably not that different. But you're going to have some angel holic that's going to wig out that sent me you know, 30 emails telling me of all the angels, and that 8,000 angels appeared on the, on the head of a pin by my bed tonight and, and, and did the river dance and told me, blah, 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 that you should. And it's always going to be some sick-ass prophecy that tells me to go to some part of the world I ain't going to. You know what I'm saying? It's just something weird that people will accumulate such weird spiritualness if you tell them to go play in the spiritual freeway. Like I am. All spiritual experience that is truly from God the Father brings honor and glory only to Him. See, I know that. So, if I spend an evening with an angel... <laughs> All of it, every second of it, not just the punchline, not just parts, all of it, creates in me a passion for glorifying God. <clears throat> That's how you know if anything is from God. 
is you follow the thread of glory to where it ends. Where does this end? Well, that's coming from a cavalier, arrogant, not so humble Christian rock star in his own mind. <laughs> well, I have witnessed, <laughs> I, have, I have evidence of almost everything I do on, on video, and I have witnessed the core of my work. I've witnessed the all of my work, and it always lands on, you need to glorify God in your life. I need to glorify God in my life. I know that. <clears throat> but I am seriously convinced that that is all well and good for Samson's mom and dad to have a visitation from the Lord that ends with him disappearing when he flies into the, the pit of fire that the burnt offering's in. I, and that's great. But what about the rest of us? Well, that's just for the patriarchs. That's just for them. That's just for the people who uh, end up in Bible stories. Not true. The Spirit is constant. The Spirit is all around. God is all around. Jesus is all around. The Holy Spirit's all around. Angels are flying everywhere. Demons are flying everywhere. There's all kinds of cool stuff happening in the spiritual realm that we're supposed to be walking in, that we're supposed to be living in. And periodically going, oh yeah, we're in the world still. <laughs> I forgot. Good time to remember you're in the world is when you're in the car, driving, and the rest of the time, you should be walking in the Spirit. Well, if you're walking in the Spirit, how come you're not having spiritual experience? You should be having spiritual experience. You should take every weird, crazy story in the Bible, like Jesus saying, Lazarus, come forth, and you should be presenting that to God and say, when am I going to do that? When's my turn? Children look at dad and say, when do I get to drive a car? When do I get to go to work? And somehow, so when do I get to own a firearm? You know what I'm saying? It's like, we do this, yet Christians don't think like this. We don't go, well, when do I get to do that? Jesus said, greater works you're going to do than what I did. Well, bring it on. When do I get to do it? Well, you don't seek spiritual experience. You don't expect it. You don't even want it. it doesn't even, it's not part of your consciousness. Because you're not walking in the Spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to have spiritual experiences. Well, are you telling me that Samson's folks were walking in the Spirit? I don't know. I never met them. I don't know. I know they had one hell of a spiritual experience. And if they weren't stupid, from that moment on they walked in the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit didn't come until Jesus said it. You're right. So times were different. But I'll tell you one thing. For such an unspiritual time, meaning since there is no Holy Spirit for people to have living inside them, sure it was a superstitious time. Which to me says, incredibly spiritual time. If people were like putting up rocks for every little thing and worshiping them, they were hungry. They, were, they wanted to be spiritual. They were aware of the things spiritual. They just didn't know what to do. But we have been given the tools. We have been given our salvation. We have been given everything we need to be spiritual. And we are commanded to walk in the Spirit. And we're not having spiritual experiences. And I love you madly, but I really don't want to hear your, your stories. It's so rude, you know, it's so rude. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want people to send me long emails or long texts or long phone calls telling me about their encounter with an angel or when Jesus showed up and visited them when they were sitting by their mom who was dying. Ah, that's so mean. So mean. Telling people to go out and have these experiences, and if they do, I don't want to hear about it. Keeping it real. I am so, so edified, which means built up, by my spiritual experience, and by the spiritual experience of people that I am directly in contact with. I want you to take that encouragement and those testimonies 
and share them with someone to encourage them, to build them up. If Jesus visited you while you were sitting with your dying mother, I'm not surprised. I would expect nothing less. If I were sitting with my dying mother and Jesus didn't walk in personally, he'd have hell to pay. Because my experience with him is pretty good about showing up. So tell someone else who doesn't know that. Tell someone else who doesn't already know that. Now, if you want to CC me on an email, you send some, feel free. But don't just, don't just parade it for me because you heard it and then you tried it and, it and something good came of it. I know if you walk in the Spirit, you will have spiritual experiences. And the ones that cause you to fall on your knees and praise God Almighty and not pound on your chest like, look at me, I'm really different and special and bitchin'. I know are the ones from God. But I want to admonish in Jesus' name every single believer in the room and every single believer in TV land that does not have these experiences to understand that that is indicative of not walking in the Spirit. It's not indicative of God choosing to bless some people different than others. It's not indicative of our personalities being different. It's indicative of us not achieving walking in the Spirit the way He intends. And the way you walk in the Spirit the way He intends is you walk in the Spirit the way He intends. You stop yourself and say, I choose right now to walk in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. God the Father, help me. Jesus Christ, help me. Show me how to walk in the Spirit. Show me how to walk with you. Open the Word. Read the Word. Go online. Google. Walking in the Spirit. See the Scriptures on it. Write them down. Write them on your hand. Write them on your forehead. <laughs> Do something to get this into your system and start being mindful of walking in the Spirit. It's just like kind of reminding yourself that you're on a diet. How do you go on a diet? You go on a diet. You pick some kind of plan, and you go on it. Some spiritual experiences can be scary. That's just a fact. I'd love to say if they're scary, they're not of God. Well, if they're scary and they're not of God, you may still be having them so they could be scary. But the truth is, sometimes God's kind of spooky. <laughs> you know? I mean, he's God and all. I mean, he's rather big. <laughs> rather powerful. You know? So, I don't know. If someone died and I prayed for them and they got up and walked, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have you over for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know? I don't know. What if, what, if, what if they know something I don't want to know? You know what I'm saying? All of it can be weird. All of it can be foreign, unusual, and alien, and, and spooky, especially since it's not happening and because we're not walking in the Spirit. We're not experiencing it. But anything that's from God leads you to God. And anything that's from Satan, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, that already lives inside you, that is changing your mortal being, into a spiritual being that has likeness and character and power and authority of Christ. You're already bigger than anything Satan can produce in your life just by using the name of Jesus. So we need to pray in Jesus' name for experiences in the Spirit, experiences of the Spirit, and experience walking in the Spirit first and foremost. And we need to learn how to use Jesus' name to rebuke Anything that tries to tell us it has more power and authority than we do in Christ. Unless it's God Almighty, of course. Did I not look up at the right time? Is that what happened? <laughs> All right, well, we're good. We'll just keep going. That was funny. I had a, I had a fraud. <laughs> I keep chewing on him. Yeah. <laughs>